Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Duran with DuranSafai.com where I help you design smarter, not harder. Being a freelancer means you have to find your own work and finding your own work can be very hard and scary. It's completely on you to make a living for yourself so you can pay rent, eat, and do whatever you need to do. And that can be a pretty daunting thing for a lot of people considering that the amount of client work you get and the money you get from those clients is not always going to be stable. In fact, one of the biggest fears within freelancing in general is being able to find any clients at all. I've been extremely lucky to work with hundreds of clients over the past few years, including some big names like Metallica and Olivia Rodrigo. But of course, it did not start that way. In this video, I'm going to give you my approach for getting clients as a freelance designer, and I'm going to break that down into four phases you might go through in your freelance career. While you're watching this video, try to identify what phase you're in and what you need to do to progress on to the next phase. So with all that being said, let's learn how to make some guac. So phase number one, you're a newcomer, you just got onto the scene, you're just starting to look for clients or maybe getting yourself a little bit out there on social media. Not many people know about you yet. You're probably gonna be getting a lot of local work or work requested from friends. Maybe your friend's band needs a t-shirt or your friend's company needs a new logo. Quick side note, you're actually always gonna bear the cross of having your friends request some design work from you. Some friends somewhere is gonna have a great business idea that they want you to make a outstanding new logo for, which is great that you come to mind, but it does kind of get funny down the road, especially when they want that, uh, that friend discount, AKA free. So at this point, if you're even getting work for some local places or for your friends, it's a good place to start and get your feet wet, but it's not gonna be sustainable. Either way, here's some tips on that front as you begin your freelance career. This actually applies all the way down the road, but number one, do good work and make good first impressions. Your work will get better over time. Obviously, no one starts as the LeBron of design, but focus on quality over quantity and persist in trying to learn something new with every design that you do. Number two, you gotta put in that sweat equity, even though it sucks. This is a term that I hated to hear, but it's real. And it basically means sometimes you're just gonna have to put in that hard work, even though it may not directly lead to instant financial growth. So sometimes you do have to take on free work just to get your name out there and get your presence on the play field, or maybe even work with clients with a really low budget, again, just to get your name out there. If I never did all that, I would not be where I am right now. So it does suck in the moment, but it will pay off down the road. It's obviously something you don't wanna to stick to for long. Uh, as you progress, you don't wanna do free work or start consistently working with clients that have a low budget, you don't wanna get stuck in that phase at all. You also wanna really start taking seriously building out your foundations, especially if you didn't go to school for art or design. You wanna start feeling yourself out as a designer, gauge what kind of people are interested in your work, and also where your work fits best in, then hone in on what you're good at. That way you can start trying to build a client base inside of that niche that you're interested in. So phase one is all about finding yourself as a designer, finding what niche you wanna pursue, and start putting in the work for anyone who takes interest. Okay, now we're getting into phase number two, the outreach phase. So at this point, you've done some work around town, maybe for some friends or some clients you found on social media, but it's definitely not enough to be stable. So at this point, you wanna start really reaching out to clients and getting as much work under your belt as you can. This is where you have to start being really prolific, not only with your work, but also in networking and reaching out to clients and putting in the effort in finding people who want your work. So here are some tips for phase number two. You wanna build a portfolio first. So find what you're good at or what you like to do and build a solid portfolio off of that, even if it's fake. If you're struggling to find clients within your niche, start doing concept work in the niche that you wanna build a client base in. Use this to show people that you can deliver them value as a designer. Don't just expect them to trust you. They're hiring you to make some cool stuff to look at. So the first thing you wanna do is show them some cool stuff to look at. You can even start doing design challenges to improve your design game and get some more work out there. I know a lot of my friends who have garnered a lot of attention and clients by doing challenges like the 365 poster, where you make a poster for every day of the year or even 36 days of type or whatever. So just find what suits you and crank out work that your ideal client base would be looking for. You also don't need to have a super polished portfolio. I've honestly always just used Instagram as my portfolio. But then again, a lot of the work I do is sort of informal uh, in comparison to like corporate design. So if you feel your work needs more context and explanation, you can create a pretty cool portfolio using like a website builder like Squarespace or Wix or something like that. But again, focus more on the quality of the work that you're putting out there rather than the portfolio itself. And here's my biggest tip on here, be everywhere on social media. This is just how it is in present day. You need to be on social media. Get on Instagram and TikTok. You could post process videos even. Anything you could do to start building a following is going to give you credence and eventually help you find clients. Here's another big tip. You have to start engaging in cold outreach. So cold emails, cold DMs, things like that. Just make sure to do your research, 
I obviously didn't get to work with Metallica by DMing the Metallica Instagram page. If you want to get a client like that, you want to find what company does their merch, find someone in that company that can link you with the art directors, maybe go on LinkedIn for that and start reaching out from that angle. You want to be smart about your networking. You don't always want to reach out to the top boss or your dream client immediately. You want to start small and work with people that know those people and maybe they refer you and you can work your way up that chain. The first couple clients I got were off cold messages. Here's actually the exact message that I DM'd a ton of clothing brands when I was starting out. A lot of them didn't respond, but some of them did. And that got me some really good and consistent client work that I could put on my portfolio and eventually get more clients from. Just do not, however, be a bot. You don't want to send a thousand of the same messages messages to everyone you know like you're some sort of pyramid scheme talk to people and potential clients like people have genuine conversations form a connection and that will lead you a lot further than sending them a message like i do designs please hire me that's something i only learned later on but it's going to help you a lot. So the concept of quality over quantity doesn't just apply to your work but it also applies to the way that you network with people. Okay, phase number 3. This is what i like to call pushing your rock up the hill. Getting a little existential here, at this point you've got some decent clients on your belt, just enough to make you think, maybe I can start doing this for a living. You know, you've got yourself some repeat clients and you're starting to feel a little bit more comfortable with the whole freelance thing. So at this point, you just gotta keep pushing that rock up the hill. And by that, I mean just keep chipping away at your craft, get really comfortable with your work and you'll keep going up as long as you stay consistent. It only gets easier from here. The more work you do, the more work you'll get. If you've got some repeat clients, that's a great way to get your foot in the door with a lot of other clients. Sometimes those clients will just automatically refer you to their friends, but you don't always want to wait on that to happen. So you can always message your clients like, hey, I love working with you. If there's anyone else you know that needs work, they can hit me up. Again, this ties back to having genuine conversations and genuinely bonding with your clients. I can't underestimate how important word of mouth is. So you want to make sure that your clients like you not only as a designer, but as a person too. You're also hopefully showing your social media followers and anyone you know pretty much that you're getting these clients that you're doing this work for them. And that ultimately gives you more credence and brings more people to your spot. So here's some tips for phase three as you push your rock up the hill. Like I said, be extremely personable with your clients, make wholehearted connections and be good to everyone you work with. Trust me, it goes a long way. This may seem obvious, but you don't want to make any bad impressions and you sort of have to be a people pleaser at this point. You want to be the guy that someone thinks about when they need a new design or when their friend mentions that they're looking for a designer. You want to make sure to stick in the back of people's heads because word of mouth really, really counts. And it only gets more important the more time you spend as a freelance designer. Most of the time when people need a design, they don't know where to go. So they're going to start asking around. And if you've made some genuine connections with people, you're going to be popping up in those conversations. Also, you will fall naturally into where you're supposed to be according to the proficiency of your work. What I mean is if you're doing good work, people will notice and people will tell people and you'll end up on somebody's mood board and you'll end up getting hired. That's also a cheeky little tip for you. You want to be on people's mood boards. So put your work everywhere you can, including Pinterest and Instagram, Twitter and whatnot. But anyway, like I said, push the rock, do good work. And as you get bigger and better, so will your clients. I do want to mention that pricing is a huge factor in all this, but I'm not going to dwell on it too much because I have a whole video on that. But basically a low price will help you get work in the beginning. Once you start building up your bases, you want to start increasing your prices. And that way you can do more quality work for the same or more amount of money. And you'll also probably be dealing with better clients. You also want to keep this in mind though. Prices aren't everything. Sometimes you'll have to go back to that sweat equity concept to build your credence, maybe by working with a big artist who has a low budget or just accepting a lower budget for some work you really want to do think about it like this even though for that project you might not be getting the amount of money that you want to get say if it's for a big name then that's going to be put on your portfolio and that will lead more clients to your spot like i said that gives you credence it gives you authority and it builds your respect as a designer Okay, in phase number four, this is what I'm gonna call completely coasting. It takes a lot of hard work to get to this point. And I'll be honest, not everyone will get to this point for different reasons. Maybe you lacked on your consistency, maybe you weren't smart in your networking, or you just haven't put in the time to really improve your craft. But if you've reached this stage in your design career, you've done enough client outreach and worked with enough people to have made such the amount of connections where instead of you go to the clients to get work, the clients start coming to you because they know about you or they heard about you or they saw your work somewhere or a friend refers them. This also all ties back to word of mouth. Again, you really don't want to underestimate that concept. You can only expect someone to trust you so much as a designer, but if someone that person trusts tells them to trust you, then you're in. But either way, the goal is to have clients coming to you instead of the other way around, and it is only achievable by doing this. Relentlessly putting yourself out there 
constantly delivering value to your clients and being extremely personable with your clients and your prospects. The other three phases is where you build the foundation and lay the groundwork to get here. There's really no cutting corners, but I trust that if you are vigilant with your work and you follow all the tips I outline in this video, you will eventually reach the point of completely coasting. I do want to make it clear that this phase is still sort of cumulative, as in you're going to want to have all the attributes of all the other phases in your back pocket when you need them. So that's still being ubiquitous on social media, creating genuine connections with your clients, maintaining a good portfolio and challenging yourself to get better every day. That's the four phases I've taken notice of during my time as a freelancer. I hope this helped you realize not only what phase you're in, but what you need to do to progress to the next phase. Let's quickly go over some of the key takeaways here and some final tips. Number one, you have to understand that your journey as a freelancer progresses through these distinct phases, and it's obviously not gonna be the exact same for everyone, but just having an outline like this helps a lot. Follow all the tips I gave you earlier, and I promise you'll thank me. Two, if you're unsure of your work or your capability or your prices, I recommend you undercharge or under promise and over deliver. And once you're comfortable enough with yourself as a designer, you can start building your authority and charge more appropriately for your work. Remember, the last thing you want to do is make bad impressions. So just never under deliver. Number three, get all over social media and create a good base and portfolio to show these clients that you can deliver them value. I can't stress this enough. You can't just expect people to trust you. You have to show them. If that means doing concept work in the niche that you want to be involved in, do that. If that means doing a design challenge to keep yourself working and show clients what you can do, do that. Do whatever you can do to show potential clients coming across your page that you're able to get the job done for them. Number four, do good work and be personable with all your clients. If you do this, I promise your clients will refer you. I'm at a point now where I don't go searching for clients and I've put in enough work where they start coming to me because number one, they know I'll get the job done based on the work that I put out there. And number two, I've always tried to craft a good experience for the client and I always try to be as genuine as I can. That way they know they can trust me and that way they'll let other people know that and that word will get around and eventually you'll start getting more clients based on referrals and word of mouth. And that's not concrete, but that's one of the most important things to take note of as a freelance designer. Number five, I just said this, but I'm gonna say it again because it's that important. Get all over social media, post your work often. You never know who's watching. All right, and that's a wrap. If you like this video, be sure to like the video. If you like me, subscribe to the channel. I post videos like this every week to help you become a better designer. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.